Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Now, Randy Orton signed a new five-year deal. He's just going with the flow and flowing with the go. He will remain there until he is 49 years old. WWE source reportedly said the shift to guaranteed money is why a new deal was reached rather than extending his previous one. Guaranteed money associated with contracts now is a drastic shift from 2019. There have been changes to our live event schedule, touring, international dates, media obligations, merchandise, social media. Much more fair to just reach a new deal in many situations, the source told Fightful. Using Orton is notable because one would expect Gunther to be the babyface for a show in Germany. But Orton has been unbelievably popular in the recent events in Europe over the past few months. He will be portrayed as a babyface on television. So we'll see what happens. He but. is a legacy act for a lot of people, and he's going to continue to be this way. And looking at his age, knowing what his back condition is, and knowing that he's making a whole lot of money being in a place that he's really, really comfortable, and it's the number one place in the world and probably still will be in five years, this might be the last active contract of Randy Orton's career. Not to say he couldn't do some things after this, but this may actually be the last of the run of Randy Orton. Let me tell you something about this Randy Orton. If you watch AEW nowadays, especially Collision with that MXM promo they had, Oh yeah. AW today, and even even though even Lenny would agree to this, AW today is far more like WWE than it was in 2019. In 2019, it was absolutely 100 percent a WWE alternative. It's totally different. You know, a couple of you had Jericho or whatever, but it was like all new faces, all different style. It was everything was it was totally night and day from WWE in 2019. They were throwing things against the wall. Now there's a lot of similarities. Okay. A lot of, they've hired tons of people from WWE. I mean, but here's the point. If Randy Orton would have gone to AEW in like 2019, 2020, brother, that would have been a game changer. And it would have been so huge because he was a giant WWE name and he was a guy, unlike Jericho, he'd only ever been in WWE. He was WWE to a core to the core he would have been the biggest heel ever and with everybody else doing that uh that new modern style and him doing the wwe style my god this would have been incredible but he didn't go he would have now i don't think if you like if he would have decided to go to aw in 2024 been like that another guy going it'll be you know he'll do some stuff or whatever not gonna be a game changer it's just you know whatever but he would have been a game changer 2019 2020 and they would have had to try to keep up that momentum with him, but he would have had provided CM Punk levels of spark, you know, ratings-wise and interest-wise into the company because unlike a Christian or a Adam Copeland, you know, he still is, as far as people, when you look at him, as far as a lot of everyday fans go, that guy's still in his prime. He's still awesome, especially when you don't know the extent of how much he's been hurting over the last couple of years. Solo Sokoa is, uh, I guess he's determined that any two members of the bloodline can defend the tag team. It's it's Freebird rules. I like it. That's what they've bloodline decided. Rules. So Tama Tonga, Jacob Fatu won the titles. Fatu, eh, this, thing, this whole thing is complicated. He was supposed to get injured going through that table so that he wouldn't be, you know, like around Roman Reigns. But he, he also apparently did get a minor injury going through the table. So it's a little of both that occurred. But they do want to keep him away from Roman Reigns. And so if Roman is going to be there beating up the tag champs, it's not going to be him. And I think he's going to be out of action for a little while. But for right now, it's Tama Tonga and Tonga Lo as the tag team champions. And when Fatu comes back and Roman's on the show, Fatu can defend the titles. So that's the way they're doing it for now. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Remember what I was just talking about, about being flexible? Yes. Well, you're going to have to be flexible for the upload today, everybody, because I didn't even record that last segment at all. <laughs> just didn't hit the button. I was too mad. Well. But luckily, producer Jared is recording all of the audio, and he's going to uh, get it to Semper Vivi, who will upload it a little bit later on, and we'll get it up on the front page. Hot and flexible, I am.
that doesn't make you feel any better, does it? It made me feel so much worse. Okay, a couple of notes. The Olympics are over, so it'll be very important to see where everything ends up now that they're over. Because uh, SmackDown... <laughs> Back to where they were two weeks ago? Well, WWE was not affected much by the Olympics, and AEW was killed. So uh, we're going to find out how much of that was the Olympics and if there's something to worry about here. I wouldn't worry about it too much yet, although I will say, you know... You sure? I understand that they were up against the Olympics and everything like that, but last week's Rampage and Collision numbers were like... I mean, I don't care if the Olympics were on, I don't care what. I mean, all time... In the history of the shows, all-time record lows, under 200,000 viewers, we're talking. And, oh my God. Well, in the normal cool. time slot, by the way, for, for Rampage. The normal time slot. All-time lowest everything for that show. Well, it, with Collision, they bounced back somewhat, but it's still one of the lowest of the year. And that's the problem, is they still need another... What, 70,000 viewers? I mean, when the show's doing around 450, okay, that's fine. But you're also now going to be going into football season, which in the United States of America, as everybody knows, is brutal to you. And we saw the chunk that it took out of collision when CM Punk, you know, was there, let alone what it, you know, ended up atrophying to. And this was a time for them to get hot leading into these big shows and leading into fall and their new deal supposedly and everything, all this excitement that you think should be happening here as we close out August and go into the fall. And I don't believe that they've actually gotten a whole lot more momentum at all. I think it's better than it's been at the beginning of the year for sure. They've had better shows and better moments, but there's a lot you can poke holes in. And I hadn't thought about this, but people keep, I've heard it more recently now because I don't pay attention to wrestle ticks really or advanced sales but i didn't realize how bad it was like in new york what they scaled it for it's only scaled for like six thousand people or something like that and they're not selling it out yet and i look at some of the others and it's like there's a there obviously is a problem here because not only are you cold not only are finances tough for a lot of people which i think people downplay that sometimes as far as you know disposable income goes but you know, it's again, right now, they're just there's problems there where they have got to try to regain some of their core fan base because they've lost those people and they got to figure out a way to try to get them back. Well, the uh, Rampage show this week, 219,000 and a 0 0.09. The SmackDown show, 2.3 million and a 0.64. That was a return of Roman Reigns. And Collision was 370. And a point one one. So again, you know, SmackDown hurt much less than uh, Rampage and Collision were. And as far as like the the quarters, Brandon Thurston sent out the quarters, and Collision was just like up and down the whole night. You know, SmackDown was kind of up and down the whole night. And man, that Rampage was a straight line. I mean, you never see anything like it. Just whoosh, it had how many people did it have? There were there were. Uh, Whoever those 219,000 people, people 219,000 people decided, I'm watching Rampage today. Yeah. They started at the beginning, they watched to the end. None of them turned off, nobody tuned in after the start time. It was just straight line right across. Hey, that that's, that's a, a good thing. That was the sickos. Those are your hardest of hardcore, or they fell asleep with the TV on. Either one, one of those two. Actually, you know what? If I look at, uh, what's the collision? What was the collision low? Eh, the lowest they they only dropped to three thirty five. Yeah, I mean they were pretty. Consistent but I I, I think that we can safely say, actually we can because they dropped below uh, two hundred thousand last week. I would say that the number of sickos is about two hundred nineteen thousand. That's your sickos. They're gonna watch from beginning to end, no matter what. Two hundred nineteen thousand of them. Yeah, and you know what? It's always amazing that about what a hundred thousand of those people don't order the pay per views. They are there for every TV show, but they do what around one twenty, one fifty, whatever. The well, you know, they may have friends. You know, they go to a friend's house. If, every, if everyone has one friend over, that's the sickos. Go to the bar. I guess you can't do that anymore. Is it in bars anymore? Like the Buffalo Wild Wings and such. I don't know. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.